So yesterday you guys got a very brief and copyright claimed one minute video of the 10R unboxing, but you didn't really get to see my impressions. We do that for most Android phones because they're breaking out of what I'm normally used to, but when we unbox iPhones, we figured doing it more cinematically is more interesting than me just going, I like this, this, this looks good, I really like this, this is good. So today we can focus primarily just on the impressions after day one with my iPhone 10R. So the first impressions, of course, always start with the display, especially with the 10R, because a lot of people were saying that the display was going to be very pixelated because it's 720p, even though it isn't. Both to the pixelation complaints and the 720p complaints, the iPhone 10R display looks absolutely wonderful. And maybe it's just because I have bad eyes or it's a placebo because I like iPhones and I'm biased towards Apple, but I cannot tell the difference when it comes to pixel density between my iPhone 10S Max and my iPhone 10R. They both have perfectly detailed displays. I've watched a ton of YouTube videos on this phone ever since I unboxed it. My SIM has been in it. I'm testing it out. For all the people asking, Drew, aren't you doing the Pixel 3 challenge? We are. I've communicated with Aaron from For the Love of Tech, and he's okay with the fact that we're reviewing the Razer phone right now and the 10R unboxing. He's okay if we start the Pixel 3 challenge next week. In fact, I will make an edited video announcement that I am putting my SIM in the Pixel 3, and the 30-day challenge will be starting next week. So that 30-day challenge has not started yet. Yet. For the next week, I'm just using the 10R, but after day one, pixel density definitely is not an issue. And for me, even when the phone is held very, very close to my face, I cannot see the pixels. Maybe I have bad eyesight or something, but to me, the display is still perfectly fine, especially at an average viewing distance. Most people use their phone about right here. I would never hold my phone this close to my face, but even when I do, I still think the display is perfectly crisp, very bright, beautiful colors, and overall just a very good display. The most noticeable difference coming from an iPhone XS Max to the 10R is the bezels. The bezels are much, much thicker than they were on the iPhone 10 and 10S, and that is just a little bit of the compromise that you put up with for the LCD display and the lower starting price. I do notice that the notch, because it starts at a different place now, it feels like it's a lot bigger if you compare how far the notch cuts into your display on a 10S than the notch does on the 10R, because the notch, like, it is the same size as a regular iPhone 10, but because of the thicker bezel, the notch has to kind of start more down in the middle of the phone, which it's not as intrusive as like the Pixel 3 notch, which just looks terrible, but it's just something I noticed with the 10R. The speakers on it sound absolutely wonderful. The same speaker quality I'm used to with the 10S. Battery life so far has been wonderful using it throughout the day and it's still rocking perfectly good charge. And that blue color, man, does it change depending on the lighting situation. It almost makes me think Apple picked all the colors that they did with the 10R intentionally so that that depending on what filters you put them under, depending on the lighting conditions that they're in, they look different. And maybe that draws people to the store to say, I want to look at a 10R. I want to see if I can notice the pixelation on the display or what the colors actually look like. And I have to say, it feels like the color of the 10R changes depending on the lighting environment. Sometimes it looks like a very light shade of blue. And other times it feels like a very saturated, dark shade of blue. Never actually that dark. Never like blue Talos of Tech walls dark. But either way, it feels like the running theme with the iPhone 10 our colors is very, very light, very, very accented aluminum with fairly dark glass on the back, especially coral, which to me in certain pictures look pink, in other pictures look orange. After seeing a coral 10R now, I can officially say it is definitely pink. Don't let the pictures fool you. Don't let the filters fool you. While it may definitely look orange under certain lights, coral is pink, without a doubt. It is a pink phone. But I really like the blue color of the 10R. It's very similar to the blue iPhone 5C, which came out way back when. And the camera on it has has also been fairly impressive, though I have to say I am coming from a 10s Max and I'm noticing a lot of the compromises made. So ever since I've had an iPhone 7 Plus, so it's been a few years, it's been a while, my last four iPhones have had dual cameras and I'm used to opening the camera app and having that 2x option for when I want to zoom in. The 10R is kind of teaching me how much I appreciated a lot of the features that are still available on the 10s, like having that telephoto lens. Oftentimes when I'm taking pictures, especially for my Instagram, I love getting that second angle. I love being able to have that option to use the telephoto lens. I think there are a ton of circumstances in which the wide angle doesn't look that great. And wide angle can look good, but I love having the option to switch between them on the 10s. In fact, it kind of annoys me that I can do portrait mode photography on the 10R with the wide angle lens while it only works on people. Keep that in mind, does not work in all situations. How come we can't do portrait photography with the wide angle lens on the iPhone 10s? It's locked to 
the telephoto lens for some reason, but I don't know, maybe Apple's afraid that users will get too comfortable with using the wide angle lens for portrait mode. Either way though, if you can do it on the 10R, they should let you do it on the 10S. I don't know why you can't. But anyway, I'm used to having that telephoto lens for the different angles, for the different circumstances. You can get better low light shots with portrait mode on the 10R, but in my opinion, I'm not really into low light photography that much. I feel like if you're trying to take a good picture, you should just have more light, not necessarily get a camera that can do better at low light situations. Just light your subject better. Don't wait for crappy Google algorithms to come out and fix all of your lighting environments. But yeah, we did a poll on Twitter, which I thought was interesting because I recently unboxed the Pixel 3 and I tweeted this picture and asked people what camera they think I used. Did I take this wide angle portrait with the Pixel 3 or the iPhone 10R? After 844 votes, we finally had 32%. So basically a third of the voters thinking that this was taken on a Pixel 3, which happens to be incorrect. This was taken on the iPhone 10R. And what I like is that it was not a dead giveaway. It was not 80 or 90% 10R. While a lot of you are correct, a lot of you are biased towards Apple, probably saw the picture, thought it looked good, and then said, okay, it must be a 10R because the 10R is great. So even running a poll to a biased audience, still a third of you thought that this was shot on what YouTubers may call the best camera for stills on a smartphone. While in, in fact, it was indeed taken with the iPhone 10R. I can do some comparison shots later, but I just thought it was interesting that when you don't tell people what the picture was taken on, it's not a clear answer. Most smartphone cameras look incredibly similar and you really shouldn't be making a smartphone purchase based upon which smartphone takes the best pictures overall because so many of them look so identical that it's just silly to pretend that that should be the deciding factor for an entire phone purchase. Not to mention this is cheaper than the Pixel 3 by a whole $50. It's a larger display, has face unlock, has a faster CPU, can do 4K at 60, has a better microphone, comes in more color options, and starts $50 cheaper. In fact, you can configure the 10R to be the same price as the Pixel 3, except this would be 128 gigabytes, while the Pixel 3 would still be 64. Regardless though, the biggest thing I don't like about the 10R is the removal of 3D touch. While there are plenty of you out there who say, I never use 3D touch, this stupid gimmicky feature. I use it like constantly, and I especially notice it now that it's not there. In Instagram, I love doing the peek and open feature where you can kind of push a little bit harder on a picture and see more of it, and then push it again and open it all the way. But most importantly for the cursor on the keyboard, whenever you're typing on a 10S, you can just press hard on the keyboard and then it turns into a cursor. You can do that on the 10R by holding the space bar, but it takes longer, it's not as intuitive, and I just think it makes so much more natural sense to do it with 3D Touch. And I've been hearing reports that Apple's considering removing 3D Touch entirely on 2019's iPhones, and I just hope that's not true. I know it's probably true, and they're trying to move to newer display technology, and they're not gonna bring 3D Touch in with it, but I love 3D Touch so much. It's so useful. I use it all the time, especially in Control Center, and I just don't like not having it with the 10R. It kind of sucks. Viewing angles are definitely a little bit noticeable with an LCD display, like the display does not look as accurate from as many angles, but I get why they compromise there because you're never using your phone from an angle like this. This isn't really how people use their phones. You use it straight on and straight on the LCD looks fine. Though on the 10S, if you're looking at it from an angle, the colors are a bit more consistent no matter which way you look at it. I thought that having the LCD would make the notch more noticeable when you're looking at black pixels because only an OLED display can really go truly black, unlike an LCD. But honestly, the LCD is able to get pretty dark, especially when watching YouTube, that I really don't notice it. The notch is not that more intrusive than it would be on a 10S, just because of that difference from LCD to OLED. In fact, this is making me wish that there was a mode on the 10S Max that could let you turn down the resolution, just like you have on Android with the Note 9, except it comes out of the box already scaled down in favor of a longer battery life, because this has the longest battery life of any iPhone, and a lot of that is helpful because of the 828p display. So I kind of wish that I could turn down my 10s display so it would allow for a longer battery. But either way, I really like the 10R so far. It's definitely not my ideal iPhone compromising on a lot of things I'm very much used to, but I'm going to use it for the rest of the week until the Pixel 3 challenge starts. And I understand why it could be a phone for people who just need to get to the point, don't need a lot of fancy features, but want the latest, greatest iPhone. I can see why a lot of people are probably going to buy this. Though, not the ideal iPhone. 10s is still noticeably better in lots of different areas. So if you guys picked up a 10R, let me know what you think down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you in the next one.